continues. You can also take from the entire boundaries of Yisrael, no shimu production, wives and concubines. We go down to the Pilish. And he, here the Ram explains how he understands the difference between them. Notion b'ksuba v'kidushin. Wives are, have ksuba and kidushin. And the polakshim b'loi ksuba b'loi kidushin. And polakshim have neither ksuba nor kidushin. Ela b'yuchot b'levad. But rather than being closeted with him alone. Koina oiso. He acquires her a muteris loi. She's permitted to him. Hagos maimenes. Saith to you. Shalmi and ksubas. Amir oima polegish in loksuba. Amir says a polegish, I can't give my eyes no ksuba. Rabbi Yudah oima yesh loksuba. She does have a ksuba, I believe, tonight ksuba, but not the other conditions of sustenance and uh, children, etc. He has a mission site, Sanhedrin. Oh, Rabbi Yudah oima rab. Rabbi Yudah said the name of rab. Women are ksuba and kedushin, concubines without ksuba and without kedushin. And even though Rashi in Barajas 25.6 writes, that Pelegish does have Kedushin without Ksuba. The Ramban already disagrees with him. We should, we, the, the text reads, a production without Ksuba and without Kedushin. The case of Mishnah brings a lot of familiar issues by marriage. Create a mountain tailor. The Adoram writes, How was the world before the Torah was given? He met. A woman in the marketplace and what's of who the he? They both desire nice and so he had a relationship with her boy Lois and he had a repair and have a relationship. Zua Nikra Kadesha. And the Kraz Kadesha. She is called a Kadesha, a wanton woman. Shekai Ito lives with her and her willingness. Bli Kedushin without sanctification. In our Mishnah, in, in when the Torah was given, then it was forbidden because it says in Torah 23:18, a Jewish person is not permitted to be a kedusha. Thus, somebody who lives with a woman, even with her agreement, without exuberant kedushin, even though he pays her for it, he, he transgresses on this negative commandment, and therefore pelegish is only permitted to a king. And he gives a reason that the Ramam has a text in Sanhedrin. Yeah, Pelegish has no ksuba, no kedushin, and she's forbidden to an individual because it says loyti akadesha, only to a king is she permitted. That's what he says the realm had as the text. Arrived argues it's not a kadesha, she is rather set aside for him, and she's called uh, a, a mufkeres. Because Rive is of the opinion. When it says in the Laitia Kadesh, it's talking about a woman who's unmarried who permits herself to live with many men. But one who sets aside herself aside for one specific person, there is no malchus. Lashes and no forbiddenness, and she is called a Pelegesh. That's found in the Psukim that a woman who lives with a husband that's set aside for her without sanctification is a Pelegesh. And there's no forbiddenness in the Torah when she is not uh, uh, having relationship with others. The Magen Mishnah <coughs> explained that the Ramam had the text in Sanhedrin 21a, Galakshim Abikidushin, without Exuba. And that woman that lives with a person without Kedushin is not a Pelegish, but rather a Kedesha. But a Hedyat, who's not a king, is forbidden in a and the only one that he can live with without Kedushin uh, is and have as a Pelegish is, is, a, is a young lady who, who was sold by her father and the Omas has a right to marry her and he use, utilizes that right, that is called a Pelegish. Uh, and he has the right to take the concubines that he took, takes to his, to his uh, castle to work that which women do, tabachot, butchers, oifers, bakers, 
where Kachot is uh, spice repairers, and Shenem it says, and there the posig is spice makers, uh, butchers, and bakers. Lacha Mishnah says that Rashi is the opinion that Pelegish is Bikadushim without Ksuba. The Ramban is the opinion that Pelegish is without Kedushim, like the Rambam. He doesn't mention Ksuba because the obligation of Ksuba is only the Rabbonah. The Lacha Mishnah questions, according to the Rambam, why does the Gemara explain? That a, play, a concubine has no ksuba. She is somebody that lives with without sanctification as well. And when he didn't sanctify her, why should she have a ksuba? He questions what we find in the laws of marriage that a ksuba is rabbinical. How, therefore, uh, does he write that a polegish is without kedushin and without ksuba? Ksuba is drabbonon. Therefore, okay, I can understand. That uh, uh, can I give it as a reason exubo, right? Uh, and 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 the private person. It's forbidden to the private person. Therefore, he explains that according to the Rambam and the Ramban, solution itself is what establishes. And it's mentioned in Gemara that a Pelegish has no exubo. To tell you that Chomim enacted only for a woman who is. Married Ksubo, and Pelegish is not his wife, therefore he did not give her Ksubo. It doesn't mention how she becomes a Pelegish. The Knesses Hagdoilo, and the language of the Rambam, in Hilton's Melochem, learns that the Rambam codifies the Halochem, that a Melech that added a wife to the 18, which are permitted to him, transgresses, the, uh, he should not add, have more wives. And he receives lashes only if he lives with her. But if he only sanctified her, he does not get lashes. And he brings this from the Gemara, Ksubo. It says Ksubo. That he understood that Rambam mentions it without uh, to tell you that the king doesn't transgre transgress by this, that he takes another woman more than the 18. When he does it with a kedushin alone, sanctification, only whether he lives with her as a married wife. And he, the Gemara uses the language ksuba to tell you that it's forbidden on a king to live with her without a ksuba, as we find that every husband is forbidden to marry, live with his wife without a ksuba. And he continues that according to the gifts, the text of Rashi, that women have a, a that wives are with a ksuba and betrothal. And Pelagshin are with betrothal without Ksuba, then we have no question what it says in the Gemara without Ksuba. The Bnei Ahuva, Abinus and Ibshitz, argues the exact opposite. According to Rashi, it's very difficult because the Ksuba is the Raisa, there's a difference between a wife to a concubine. For a wife, there is a Ksuba, and to a concubine, there isn't. But if the Ksuba is the Abonin, and in the Torah, there's no difference between a wife and a concubine because uh, both of them are with Kedushin. The answer is that according to the opinion, Hexub is with Rabbonin, it's not in the Torah, still, uh, this was the custom before the enactment to give Hexub to women. That they are the those wives who are the mainstays of the house, as it says in the post in Shemoyz twenty two sixteen, Moya Absulas. We find that this was a custom. That's why we come to the Hamishim Shikolim and Noshim wives that they have all super called his wives and the concubines, and other wives that he takes without the guarantee of the Maksuba are secondary to the mainstay wives. There we find. That they didn't give exuba to Pelagshim. And those are the opinion that exuba is the right. So you have to have the text that says Pelagshim and Bekadushim without exuba. Yamar Shal explains the, the opinion of the Rambam that he had a text in Sanhedrin 21a, like the Rambam, concubines uh, without exuba. Even though for the exuba we're talking about is Midrabona. But it could be when they married wives uh, with their relationship, because the Ben there's no 
betrothal. He acquires his wife when he lives with her. A life of marriage. Therefore, they would write Mohar and Mata, meaning uh, something that was given. His intent is what it says in the Bosik again. Kamoyer Absulois and Shmoy is 22.16. But when they want them to be a concubine, so they could send her whenever they want, and they should not inherit, her children should not inherit his money, they didn't write a contract. And so the Marshal explains the opinion of the Maga Mishnah, that even though you were Aksubas Rabbonon, since it was customary to write Aksuba to a woman and not to a concubine, there's a difference in the Sasuk in the Torah between a concubine to a wife. According to the Marshal, the Rabbi Yonison Aksuba is mentioned even after the Tekkon of Rabbonon, because Aksuba uh, remained the difference between a wife and a concubine. The truth is really active. Who was uh, somebody who fought against the false Messiah? He cites those who argue that, according to the early commentaries, who are of the opinion that the Pelagish is permitted to a, to a private person, the king does not have to set her aside with witnesses, like the Rambam, only by Yichud um, Bilvad by only with uh, closeting himself with her, he acquires her and she's permitted to him. When the king closets himself with himself, alone with her, Yagiv is not of the opinion that he has to take her with witnesses and he has to say before them, I am setting her aside as my wife, as my concubine. That as we find in Hill's issues, that everyone who marries a woman has to do it before two witnesses. And we a, a discusses whether a person lives with a concubine on a permanent basis. It becomes known to all, maybe she's considered his concubine, even without witnesses to be liable for her for, uh, to, like, to cause others who live would live with her to be liable for a death penalty because they live with someone else's wife who is called a concubine. Now, the Amnines is the opinion that when the Melech uh, closes himself with a concubine, she's forbidden to everyone as the king's wife. She's forbidden to a private person even if the king dies or divorces her. Mechavah's Mishnah is ensure. If we're going to the Rambam, a concubine is forbidden to everyone, like just like the, wives, the king's wives, when he takes her by closeting without having a relationship. The opinion of Itzel upon a vision is the opinion that according to the Ramam, a concubine is acquired to the king by closeting without sanctifying. Like Ben Noyach, that through that that he sets her aside for his wife, she becomes his, his married wife. And the Torah gave us a special law that when a person marries a wife, every Jew has to betroth his wife before he can live with her. And therefore it can't be that a private person can set himself aside as a Pelegesh without exuber and betrothal, because the Torah said that that itself does not consider his wife, only a king may do so. Because the mission cites the Ramban who disagrees and is the opinion that Pelegesh is permitted to a private person. The Marshal cites Rabbeinu Yoyno, who explains why the Ramam says Pelagshim were permitted to a king without contract or betrothal, because his fear is, every, is on all the people, and no one will have a adulterous relationship with her, and therefore it's enough as an acquisition. And Rabbeinu Yoyno disagrees with the Ramban, who thinks that a Pelegish is permitted to an individual. And the Pesach that says, do not uh, desecrate your daughter to cause her to become a uh, prostitute, is talking about an unmarried daughter that someone lives with her without betrothal. And the Raman writes, only the king was permitted to have this. And Ramban answers, answered him, the Hazal say it's forbidden to come on the 
unmarried woman without kedushin, not from what it says out the chalas bitcho do not cause your daughter to become uh, promiscuous, but rather they were afraid maybe a brother will come to marry his sister and a father his daughter, and then they will come to to. Uh, transgress that the whole world will be full of incestuousness but even after the enactment of the Chachomim of this forbiddenness when he lives with her just in a, in a, a, a one a man not with his brother with his brother with his sister but a person with an individual woman and a, on a uh, one time but a, a, but a private woman a private person who takes a woman to his house as his concubine and we know that she set aside for him and the children are called on his name she's permitted to another person even in Midar Abonon because there's no forbiddenness of a Pelegish Lahed Yed Menat Torah Haman continues to write a proof from David being married a Pelegish and it doesn't say in the post the, the difference between a king to an individual, and Kalo Kalevin and Funo, I had a Pelegish because it says, the Eva Pelegish Kolev, the Gidon Shrevet Yisrael was a had a concubine. Well, actually, Ish Asher Bishchem, the Ramban proves Pelegish Begivo, that the Polish says she was a Pelegish, and uh, the wife went with him, and if he, she wouldn't be forbidden to him, he wouldn't say that the father, the daughter, said to his son in law, and since he calls him his son-in-law, that shows that she is married to him. And certainly, what's in a Pelagish is permitted to a private person. Another proof that she's permitted, because it says in Shaftim, the Oichas Pelagshi, that he, they took my concubine and they, um, they, mm-hmm. and I cut her up and placed center throughout uh, the domain of Israel because they did terrible things in in the people of Israel. That only the others did uh, incestuousness, that they lived and they tormented her. But he did not do anything when he took her because it would seem like I guess it permitted to a private individual. Rabban adds, it doesn't say this edict of a Pelegesh in the Talmud and which Bezin made it so. Where do we time do we find that? Certainly Pelegish is permitted to a private person. He argues that Ambam doesn't forbid a Pelegish for an individual, as he writes in those issues. Anybody who has a relationship with a woman for promiscuity without bathroom through gets lashes. I mean that that's when he's talking about having a promiscuous relationship, and not when he sets her aside to be his concubine. And at, at, at the exact opposite, then we should bring a proof that the Ammons of the opinion that a Pelegish is permitted from what it says, it doesn't say anyone who has a relationship without Kedushin receives lashes. The Mishnah in El Hazishi is very galvalo of the questions of the Rambam. On the Ramban, that uh, from where we have, it says that uh, in the private person is forbidden in a concubine. He writes that maybe these words were lacking in the Sefer that was in the hands of the Ramban. And on the question of the Ramban, where do we find an edict to forbid a, a, a concubine to a pri- private person? It doesn't prove that the Ramban is of the opinion that is permitted. Because he, he himself concludes in his, in his truths that you should tell them in your place that they should not think of taking a concubine. Because if they will do so, they become promiscuous and uh, they will have a relationship with women who are forbidden because of Nido. As we see, that even according to Ramban, you shouldn't take a concubine. Because the Mishnah pushes off this argument of the Ramban that uh, in, in Sifri, in the, all the books of the Nevi'im, you see there was a concubine even for private persons. It could be that all those that, that are mentioned were slaves, were maidservants Jewish, that were actually, in a sense, betrothed by their parent fathers to the uh, owner, according to the Rambam, that the acquisition of, of the maid 
Tush made is one that has a rule of pelegish, of a concubine who is permitted to a private person. Fikir Yismelech brings the proofs of this idea that every place we're talking about by a maid or a Jewish maid, um, since in the Pesach it says by Gidoin, the Shoftim 8, Pesach Lamed Aleph, and his Balak Shoyim, in Perictes, it says on the, her child, Ben Amosoy, the child of his maidservant. So we see that she was actually a maidservant who was taken and by the master as a concubine. The marshal in the Amshar Shleimah cites the opinion of the Radak, like the Ramban, that the Pet Bilegish, there is no marriage from the Posik in, uh, in Shmuel Beis 12 11. Behold, I will bring upon you uh, a evil from your house, and they will take your wives to your uh, before you. And I will give them to your to others, and they will uh, cohabit with them uh, to for all to see. And now, how can I who make an edict that I'll show them that he should sin? He should have a relationship with his father's wives. And at the end, it says he didn't sin because it was only wives that were seduced by his father. And in Dublin, there was no it had no law of marriage. Because they were forbidden to everyone, not because of marriage, but because they were the concubine. And even though she, the his wife, father's seduced per, uh, woman is permitted to the son, it's a, definitely something that's very despicable uh, to have a relationship with your father's uh, concubine. The rival <coughs> is of the opinion that the forbiddenness of Kadesha. Of being promiscuous, as it says, it refers only when she's open to to any man. But those that are set aside for a specific person, there's no lashes involved, and there is no forbiddenness or a negative prohibition. And she is the concubine that's written in the Torah. So it seems that the Rav and the Ramban and the Radak are of the opinion that a pelegish is permitted to a private person when he set her aside. When you're in the Ramam of the opinion that's forbidden, even when you set her aside, and a concubine is only permitted to a kink. The Marshal pushes off the proof of the Ramban from Pelegish Begivo, because even though she, he, that he had one, it was forbidden to him, and the main I, argument that he had was how could the others be so so cruel that uh, they didn't give him a place to sleep and then they wanted to uh, rape her not in a normal fashion and at the end they, they killed him killed her by uh, over having a, too much of a relationship with her and the, uh, the deeds are very despicable more than Stoin and how could they be in Menei Yisrael so and all the tribes fought with Binyamin because they didn't want to uproot from this, within themselves these terrible people and the Pesach calls him a wife and the father of the daughter calls him the the the, the, the partner as a son-in-law and that's the way people speak even though they were not married Our Marshal question, questions on the Rambam from Yaakov, they took two palakshim that says, Bilo Pelagish Oviv. It says, Bilo, Bilo was the concubine of his father. And he answered Yaakov so in, 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 through the Vua that he had to have 12 tribes and certainly married Bilo and Zilpo with Kedushin and marriage. And they're called Pelagish. They're called a concubine because, to begin with, they were the maidservants of Rocho and Leo. And, and it could be. And after they were married to Yaakov, they still serve, served the house in, as a secondary wife, like the uh, concubine. And the name Pelegish remained even though Yaakov gave Kedushin. It brings proof from this one. It says, by sorrow, she gave him Hogo to Avrom as a, a wife, as I'll tell us, to a wife, not as a Pelegish, even though 
in the next post, he calls her a Pelegish. They have Pelagshim, Rashir La Avrom. And therefore, the Medrash says that Avrom uh, did not have many Pelagshim, but just Hogar. That's Ketura. She's called Pelegish because she was previously the, the one who assisted in the house. She remained that way even afterwards. Like the Ebenezer says, a Pelegish means a maidservant. But it says by Rochel, she gave Bilo Shivchoso as a wife, and not the Pelegish. So it shows that Yaakov did give her a Kedushim. We also find the Chazal, the Yosef Hazadik, uh, had to show his father, according to the Medrash, Shkar Erison, the Ksuba of his wife, of Osnas, and before Yaakov would bless Menashe and Ephraim. This, that, Yosef had to ask permission, a uh, mercy, that the Shechina should come back on Yaakov. There's a proof that if he would not have taken her with Sanct, with Kedushin, Betrothal, and Ksuba, uh, a nuptial agreement, a, a marriage agreement, they would not have been worthy of blessing. But certainly, Yaakov himself would definitely not have taken Zilpah and Bilo to have Shuti Yisrael without marriage. Uh, yeah, exact opposite would seem to be case to would seem to be the case that from the concubine in, in Giva we see that a private person cannot have a wife. Otherwise, how could he have given her over to the other person to be saved from himself being molested? The forbiddenness of Aishas Aishas is more stringent than that of uh, having a relationship with a man. Now, Sholem proves from the concubines of Dovid was with, that they were without Kedushan, because if they were the wives of Dovid with Kedushan, how could he have lived with them? Sholem would have then gone out of his mind, that's the Lotion of the Marshal, to, to for, for, go for, uh, do a forbiddenness. It says in Vayikra 18.8 that the uh, one that has lived with his father, he should not live with her. And how could he consider that uh, he'll find a favor in the eyes of the, of the populace? They weren't all uh, people who were sinners. Now, Sholem stole their hearts, and he said, he'll do greater good for Klai Yisrael than David. Because of his sins, David is not worthy of being king. But certainly, certainly, uh, they live with David without marriage. Now, Sholem was of the opinion that since the people want that he should rebel, there's only embarrassment to his father, as Achitoifel told him to do. The Ridvaz explains that Belegish Begiva is, is, is considered in the Pesach at times a wife since he had a, a, the custom of marriage, even though they had a relationship with a private person. And at that time, they permitted it. The proof is from what it says in Shoftim. Uh, his concubine uh, committed adultery. That if it would have been marriage, then she's liable to death. She's forbidden on her husband like any other woman that commits adultery. And uh, how could he have taken her back? But according to the Rambam, the Pelegesh is without Kedushin, even though she lived with somebody else, she's not forbidden to the original person. In the Medrash, it's brought down that I told told Avshalom to have a relationship with the concubines of his father, and he permitted it. Now, Ben Oliyom is roughly questions, since there is no sanctification, what forbiddenness is there? Lachem Mishmei explains, it's not uh, total forbiddenness, but since it's the the concubine of a king is forbidden to a private person, it's despicable, like the Redak. And furthermore, they were the concubines of his father. Uh, they are considered uh, as a vestige of an immoral relationship. A question on the Rambam. A head is forbidden in Pelegish. Only by Maria alone, after he sets her aside. Somebody sets aside in Maria, she becomes his wife totally, 
And she's not similar to a concubine to a king. Because setting her aside it causes uh, betrothal. We find that in Kedusha 19b. That she was sanctified with that which she set her aside. And she's like every other wife who is betrothed. And uh, the concept of you, it has nothing to do with concubines to a private person. Not as we said earlier. The Gra uh, points uh, points out in the post in Shmois 21.8 it says when somebody purchases a female from her father under the age of 12 and if the master does not want to marry her then it says Vehevdo it says over the Eloi with an Aleph. <clears throat> we read it as, which means no, he does not want to, and it's read as to him. He doesn't want to take her to him. He explains that uh, this special relationship of you, the master to the maidservant, is done through setting her aside alone, without any need for extra betrothal. And when he explains the word yud, means to set aside, like to uh, prepare. And the, uh, and the question, the Kedushin is that Yud, the new Kedushin seems to say that Yud is betrothal. I mean, it explains that it's a, it's a disagreement between the, the, uh, the codifiers. How does one acquire a woman, a female child who's, who is working for him, if, and that would depend if you have to do uh, betrothal by a, a concubine or not. The one says that you need to do betrothal, uh, even by a maidservant. He's of the opinion that a Pelegish has Kedushin. The one that says that just by setting her aside, then he would be of the opinion that a concubine does not need Kedushin. And he explains that according to the Rambam, even though the, the concubine is forbidden for a private person. In Oma Ria, a maidservant who was purchased and he decides to marry her is permitted even though he, uh, he acquires her just by setting her aside and she is, she is technically his without betrothal. So, Nagora argues that those who say that Pelegish, a concubine, is with Kedushin, with uh, uh, sanctification, learning from the Polsic Loi. Because it says in the, it's written with, he did not take her with an olive, even though they read it as loyi order to him to take her, that he, she is already uh, considered his wife. But the husband has to give her kedushin, because the Pesach says he did not take her to him as a wife yet. Loyi with an olive, which means he, and therefore he has to go through the act of betrothal. And Raham Tzvi. Uh, questions on the Rambam. He writes, Amavio is a Pelegish, is a concubine. After Yud, she's his wife totally, and he not a concubine. How can the Rambam say she's a concubine? And he answers, he adds a proof that she's considered married. Well, it says in Shmois 21.9, Kemishpat, like the rule of the, uh, of the custom of the daughters, shall he act towards her? That's the, um, the action of marriage. And we see that the Rambam intends to teach us that there's no per permissibility to a private person to have a relationship with a woman, with, uh, a permissible relationship with a woman without sanctification, except for this child uh, maid servant. And even though he doesn't give her actual kedushin, and it looks as if he's having a relationship without, without sanctification, she is set aside for him, and that from the time he purchased her, and that's called the betrothal. He doesn't mean to say that uh, the maidservant after Yud remains a Pelegish. Rather, she's his wife, and that's the going of Yudhisan actions also learned that way. But according to the case of Mishnah, that the concubines that Kolev and Gidoim had were, talking, were referring to those maidservants. And it would seem uh, that the Rambam, they, they have the opinion like the Rambam, that the relationship is permitted because it's a concubine to a king. I mean, Yaakov Memdan comes up with a different answer. 
And the Ramam learned, like all the Gidden, the Kanagamites were permitted because they were Shoifetim, and they have the rule of a king as a Shoifet who is permitted with a, to have a concubine. The Makna explains the intent of the Rivet in the explanation of the word concubine that it comes from P. Shagal, which it means, sometimes it means, Shagal means to have a relationship, and sometimes it means that she works in the house, comes to make a differentiation between a wife and a concubine. That the main marriage for marriage of a husband is uh, the husband is obligated to her to everything that says in the Ksubo, having a, which includes food, uh, sustenance, and relationship, and she's obligated to him. But a concubine basically is to assist the house, and the, he's not obligated to her only from time to time. According to this, the Leviam in Kedushan writes that the Ramam forbids a concubine to a private person because after Mountain Torah, you have to do Kedushan that she should be quiet for, for, ma for marriage and not like a concubine that the it's that the main purpose is for having her in the house like a maidservant before she is set aside to be married to the master with Yiyut. And we can this infer from the Rambam and he has permission to make concubines that he takes to his to his palace that the king may have the, to he, he can put them as to work as tabachot, as bakers, uh, to the cooks, oifers, and bakers, or kochers, and people who work with spi with spices. That is what a concubine is. So the question is, even we'll say that the basis of marriage is with, to, by uh, maidservant, is for the concept of when you purchase dirt, there's still a concept of marriage within that betrothal. And she's like any other betrothed woman, which we find in Zavodim, that once he set her aside, the master for himself or his son, then, because he, as it says in Shemois, that he can do it for his son as well, she's just like any other betrothed woman, that she only is permitted to marry someone else after her husband dies or with divorce, like any other married woman. And how could he say that, say, that a, a maidservant, after said being set aside or purchasing, is a concubine. And furthermore, the Gemara and Kedushan there in 18b isn't sure whether the yield causes even marriage or just betrothal. The Yeshua there says then that difference would be regarding what it says, if he will take another one, he, he cannot diminish that which he had with the first one. That would seem that from the moment he takes it to him, He's obligated to have a relationship with her, and it must be that it's a marriage. But it, we can still push this off and say, and the intent for the Posik is that after he sets her aside, he's obligated to live, to take her finally, and to have with her all the halachas that are applicable to, applicable to any married woman, which is sustenance, clothing, and relationship. The Melchizedek is of the opinion that, according to this conclusion, the Gemara uh, Yud causes betrothal. She becomes married, but she he, he does not fulfill the mitzvah until he, he obligates himself to sustenance, clothing, and relationship. According to this opinion, we have to know if the husband can have a relationship with his with the maidservant. Uh, immediately after the Yud, because our home said that that's forbidden until after marriage, Mirabonon. Now, Lopa Beis, he says, since she went there into the Chupa, she's permitted, and then she can go to live with, he can live with her, a, a, mar a husband and wife relationship, even though she is not willing. Uh, we must say that they did not make this edict by a maidservant. And that's what Evan Ozel says, that he can have a relationship with the maidservant immediately before uh, he has gone through the chuppah, because even though her status is only a betrothal. It could be, according to this opinion, uh, that a maidservant is permitted to him when she's still betrothed before the chuppah. And he explained the words of the Rambam, 
that a maidservant after you is considered like a concubine because a, kind of a Jewish maidservant after you is permitted to him to live with her even before marriage. And therefore, it's like a concubine to a king and not like a betrothed woman to a private person. It's forbidden to, uh, to live with her until after the chuppah. Now, the difference would be that when you talk about the betrothed woman, there's no permission to, permission to live with her, even in Atayra, only when she agrees. And Amavriya is from the Torah permitted even against her will. And furthermore, that the husband, the master, after betrothal, is not obligated yet with sustenance, garments, and relationship. And he'll have to chupa like any concubine of a king, that he's not obligated to do so, as we, as we explained from the words of the Machna.